uh, we have with us CBDT Chairman Mr. Sushil Chandra here and on the sidelines of the Rio Congress. Uh, so thanks so much for taking out time to talk to Tax Sutra. The last 12 months have been quite eventful for the CBDT. You had the uh, income declaration scheme, you then had the PMGKY, demonetization, 2.3 million then notices to, uh, to, to individuals, uh, you know, uh, following up on mismatches between uh, high value deposits and the profile of the taxpayers. Uh, what would you want to, want to say about the last 12 months? Exciting question. Sure. They have been really very, very, very exciting, definitely, because of a lot of new schemes actually which were there, like uh, you have said, that IDS, PMDK by and demonetization. Demonetization gave us absolutely a real insight huh. of the money which was staged in the household and uh, non-productive use, mm. which came in the banking channels. Mm. So that gave us a very big challenge also as to how should we find out the new SSEs now and how should we tax that particular amount which has come into the banks. Hmm. So th therefore immediately we started our operation clean money. We analyzed the data huh. to find out as to how that money is uh, faring well with their tax profiles. Yeah. And that gave us insight as to how many new taxpayers can come out of this hmm. and how the tax base can be deepened also. Huh. Because some persons have not shown the correct income which should have been shown considering the amount deposited by them in the banks. So what is the status of Operation Clean Money now? You issued 2.3 million notices. Now what's the way forward? Mm -hmm. How will you? Uh, how are you assessing the responses? How many responses have you got so far? And are you satisfied with them? Operation Clean, Clean Money was really an idea through which we wanted through non-intrusive methods to go to the assessees, to go to the persons. And this was such a good idea that uh, you will be surprised to know that around uh, 10 lakh of persons gave response online itself. Out of 23 lakhs? Out of 23 lakhs and that came almost in a month's time. So then we matched up their data, we found that certain persons are really complying properly and then we will close those particular cases. Then thereafter we put it into four categories, that high risk cases, huh. the low risk cases, huh. the middle, uh, middle, middle risk cases and very low grade cases. So the strategy will have to be different for all these so four. How cases. many are high-risk cases? <coughs> right. Around one lakh cases are the high-risk cases, Achha. which we have identified. So that will be top priority. That will be the top priority, yeah. and we are issuing the SMS and emails to those officers, those persons, and if they file their returns correctly, mm. then it's fine. Yeah. Otherwise, some intrusive method will have to be utilized for that also, and we will be chasing those of those persons con continuously. Exactly. The, 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 the tax they say. Yeah, I'm sure that's the case with CBDT yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about non-filers, sir. Uh, 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 you know, co contrary to what people think, the CBDT has had a game plan to chase uh, uh, tax evaders for the last few years. Uh, the uh, central action plan. You've been in CBDT now for sir, uh, so many decades. You've been a member now, then chairman. Uh, could you talk about the 6.7 million non-filers that you had identified at the, as of December 2016, if I'm not wrong? And and uh, how is that matching up with the demonetization data? Or, or are they two completely different sets of data? They are two completely different sets of data. Because okay. every, I should tell you what is the scheme actually. Every year go, we go by the non-filers management system. Yes. We have got in our department. Yes. And how does it work? We have got large th three third party uh, data with us as to how many persons are purchasing the property how many persons are investing into the funds hmm. and that all data comes to us then we match it with the uh, income tax profile hmm. or the PAN numbers hmm. and if we find that they are not filing the return and in spite of that they are purchasing very high value properties yeah. then they are our non-filers on which we chase uh, so, so AIR, every AIR year data also you will be possible. now that is called SFT data okay. now earlier it was AIR data yeah. so through various data we find out as how many new persons should come into the tax yeah. land and we issue the notices to them, not the notices, we issue first a questionnaire only to them. Yeah. So that is our non-filer management system cool. and that every year we do that. Fine. So that is something comes around 60 lakhs or something like that. But demonetization gives absolutely new insight yeah. other than that also. Sure. And for analyzing this data, we have also hired some data analytics yeah. and we are working through the data analytics and they are giving us the results and we are sure that we so, are so finding us a little bit more uh, yeah you want to so we will definitely find out some more assesses and the, de the the tax base will be definitely deepened so you want to talk a little bit more about the department's focus on data analytics everyone now says data is the new oil yeah. uh, and uh, the, the project insight launched yeah. by the department i think you appointed lnt uh, and others uh, 
is, is this is something radical something new? Uh, do you have any uh, uh, officers who know how to mine this data or is this since this work is outsourced you are looking at the outsourced firms to deliver your results we are very shortly starting our new project insight yeah which will be responsible for data mining yeah and that is a very good and a very fast project and a continuous exercise this will be a continuous, continuous exercise earlier also we were criticized that do we have so many persons that who can analyze this uh, this uh, demonetization deposits and uh, see the power of technology that 10 lakh persons could give us a reply online we did absolutely. not issue a single notice absolutely so similarly we would analyze this data of sft which is coming to us now yeah. the scope of the sft has also been increased yeah that is third party reporting yeah and that will be analyzed con considering their tax profiles their return profiles and we will be analyzing those particular cases and uh, we will find out the high risk cases and they will be taken. So data out. analytics is going to be the new buzzword for the department. Definitely, definitely. And we have got sufficient good man, technical manpower and if need be, we will be continuously hiring the data analytics teams also. So over the last few years, we've noticed a plethora of circulars, notifications, clarifications on the CBDT. And, and the feeling is that it's not only towards implementing the government's vision of a non-adversarial tax regime, that's a stated objective, but also those are the feelings I have covered the department for 13 years as a tax journalist, uh, that is it some image correction exercise or projecting a softer image of the department, a friendlier image of the department? Department always wanted a very, very clear, friendly image with the honest taxpayers. <coughs> department is focus is very, very clear. If you are honest, department is, will be working as a facilitation counter to you. But if you are a dishonest and not paying the taxes correctly, that the enforcement wing will definitely take its own work. And uh, regarding issue of the circulars, the basic thrust is that the assessor should be clear what the government wants. And we want to give a certainty about the tax issues, so that if you follow these instructions, there will be no litigation. Because litigation is also a very important issue. And the litigation should not be much and we want to give a certainty so that a person should follow these instructions and no litigation is takes place. So that will definitely give a good image of the department and that will be much easier for the assessor to follow the supporters in both ways. But the thrust is going to be over the next couple of years to reduce the litigation. Someone here was mentioning to you that you should look at you know clearing the backlog of, of cases pending in the first appeals that is CIT appeals. Definitely. We really definitely want to reduce litigation. We want to give a judgment also very shortly and in a very short time. I have got a something around 2.9 lakh of first appeal, which is definitely a cause of concern to the persons. So we have the CBDT has made a good plan for that. And we are going to reduce around 70% of appeals during this year. So that will be giving a good relief to the small taxpayers, the marginal taxpayers, and the certainty to the tax revenues. And your thrust on e-assessments. Uh, when we talk of data analytics, online replies, I think the next logical step is e-assessments. Uh, the department has already launched it. Is there a feeling that the taxpayers or the tax professionals are not yet comfortable with the e-assessments? On the one hand, uh, you know, you want a lot, a lot of taxpayers say that, you know, you should reduce the physical interaction. Yet, at, at the same time, you know, there is a little bit of prepetition about e-assessments. <clears throat> Whenever the system is changed, the persons have got apprehensions about that. And our task is to reduce as far as possible that apprehensions and the rollout should be very very smooth and good to the assessees as well as to the department. So we are starting this e-assessment from for the cases which have been selected for the limited scrutiny yeah. in the first instance. Yes. And uh, next month only we are going to start to around 100 cities huh. this particular you know that uh, e-assessments on the limited scrutiny cases. All. All. In 100 cities. And compulsory assessments. And compulsory. Or, or it could be for the a limited. option of the taxpayer. Initially, we will give some, some you know, option to the taxpayer. taxpayer also. But we would like that it should be stable and it should be the roadmap for the future. Any target for the officers that you must do 60%, 70%, 40%, 30% of, no, of cases? No, I am saying that all limited scrutiny assessment which have been selected this year will have to be you know finalized through this mode only the e assessment okay. so that will give a that will give a confidence to the assessee also he yeah. can send the reply at his own convenience and that will be examined and that will be the assessment will be decided so yeah. that will be give a very this is a really future futuristic and if there's any difficulty we are ready to solve anybody's problem into this regard there was a report sir, uh, in one of the leading uh, uh, financial newspapers uh, uh, a couple of weeks back that a fortnight ago that uh, uh, that the department or the CB, the government is looking at reducing the discretionary power of the assessing officer and introducing some legislative changes. Uh, uh, 
you know is that again a, a logical corollary to what has been happening over the last uh, uh, few years that is so many clarifications notifications uh, in some ways uh, are aimed at reducing the discretionary power of the assessing officers different aos taking different stands uh, you know so this is a, this is a large country and the number of taxpayers are also quite large and every you know high court gives a different uh, sometimes a different uh, judgments interpretation, interpretations yeah. of the same thing as far as the, you mean to say that the discretionary power i will tell you that in more than 99% cases we are doing absolutely no assessments and they are being accepted uh, through our uh, cpc and we are issuing the refunds and the assessment it is the 1% that come to the headline even the less <laughs> less than 1% i would say that and in less than 1% the 50% of less than 1% is the limited scrutiny yeah. and the remaining is in the full scrutiny yeah. there also we want that the interaction should be minimal Yeah. The tax certainty should be there, and that is why we have issued the circulars. So, as far as the discretionary power is concerned, I think they are quite less. This is again blown up in a very high proportion yeah. because that will decide absolutely as per the legal position of yeah. that particular high court or the Supreme Court. So, that judgment will be taken care of by him, and that will be decided. So, uh, of late, the department is winning some high-profile cases in the Supreme Court, be it 14A, Formula One, so, you know, some big cases, both domestic and international tax. Uh, any conscious efforts that the department is taking in some of these high-profile cases, like engaging special counsels or or engaging the solicitor general, like you all did in one of these big cases. I mean, any conscious efforts that you are taking? I think the department, once the department has completed an assessment, the department wants to win its case, like any other person. Even keen. Everywhere we want to put the best of the available resources with us. If our commissioner is feeling that he can handle this case very well at the ITT level, he will handle that. Yet, sir, you have yeah. high courts giving strictures uh, in several uh, times. They're saying that the department councils are not prepared or they have not been briefed properly. There is a there is a overload. Sir, so you would accept, you would concede, and therefore there is so much pressure on a daily basis for even the officers to brief the council. No, no, we have done, we have taken lot of steps. to reduce the litigations and to contest that also as you are aware and you must be aware that we are going in a very limited cases to the yeah, high court okay. and, uh, and and again very limited cases to the supreme court so now we are equipped then the when the cases are less at the high court and the supreme court level our officers are ready to handle those cases and once the litigation is reduced and if he finds that he needs an and in the help of a good advocate we definitely hire a standing counsel but are officers confident sir that that if they if they recommend to you that an appeal need not be filed or the chief commissioner sends a recommendation that that will not reflect adversely in some some cag or some internal uh, record of no, no no not at all not at all we have given a collegium system that two chief commissioners will decide whether we should go to an appeal to the high court or not yeah so once there is a collegium and they have taken a conscious decision there is no question of any fear on that account so a pleasure of talking to you thanks so much for sparing your valuable time in talking to tax sutra thank you have a good time yes thank you thank you